So Scripps and Bars is actually an initiative of British Council Zimbabwe. Um, it's their arts, but it came through their creative uh, economy program, um, where it was just as we were, where, where the economies and countries are beginning to open up after lockdowns from COVID, which had totally devastated the entire economy, but the creative economy was particularly hit because most of the money in the creative economy is made from performances, public performances. So when you have lockdowns, artists can't perform, they can't make money, and very few of them had actually gone digital. So now this was a fund to help creatives get back on their feet, but focus on digital content creation so that if anything like this, like COVID comes again, they are kind of foolproofed and continue to keep earning. The program has been done in two phases and last year was what we would call the incubation phase. This was where we started off with a group of 100 creatives, 25 from the UK, 75 from Zimbabwe. So uh, we did an open call and we were working through creative hubs, namely Comexposed, um, Page Poetry Alive and Kura Agency from Mulawayo. So that was the first port of call, reaching out to people who are committed to a creative hub. And then we had uh, various uh, other criteria such as age. We, we wanted this uh, program to benefit young people between 18 and 35. And then of course, um, diversity. We wanted this to be a program that's open to people um, from different parts of Zimbabwe. And then there was the issue of uh, diversity in the form of uh, gender as well. So we aimed and, and did our best to get more than 50% uh, females. Um, and then of course, we made sure it was also accessible. So that meant the program tried its best to communicate that it was open to people with even physical disabilities. So a friend of mine, her sister, well, had started this, um, like, I guess, hub, right? Um, so she sent me a link. She was like, yeah, man, I, I know you always like, you know, being part of community, so here you go. And I just attended. I didn't even know what to expect. And then it turned out it was uh, part of Scripts and Bars. And then from there, we um, got the opportunity for grant funding and, you know, just coming this side in Arare and linking up with people. Then you start building community, really. And you're like, oh man, this is my new family, and that's how I've been here. So it was mainly an incubation program where we got these people, ran some workshops on how to work the digital space, how to promote yourself, how to brand yourself, how to stand out, how to reach your audience, um, what tools, the best tools to use. Um, and we ran a series of workshops uh, with our UK partners, with the local hubs. Um, and then once we did that, there was a grant making process where all the creatives were given an opportunity to apply for a grant. We were only giving 20 of these a grant. So it was a very competitive process and we had a professional pan panel and they chose the best 20 proposals and these people were given grants to create digital content. One thing I was clear about was to do things that I've always wanted to do but put on the back burner. So that was writing, number one. Number two was putting together a body of work um, using spoken word. And so scripts and bars again, like the page post residency came at the right time to help me fulfill a childhood dream of mine, number one, but also um, it then allowed me the right resources and access for me to be able to do that um, without distraction, to do that with guidance um, and also to, to, to do that on my terms but in a structured manner and you know with the right tools and, and, and resources to, to help us to do that. I'm very happy to say that all the projects were completed. 
all of them. And um, there was a variety of, of projects. For example, uh, we had short films that were produced, um, uh, stand-up comedy shows, um, animated trailers or animated shorts as well. We had EPs uh, and mixtapes. Um, and the out, those were generally the outputs. So, you know, we had a variety that are on the market today that you can stream today on platforms uh, that stream music. From Virago from Tatli with Zinze is an example. Body from Kim Makumbe is another example. You know, it's quite broad. The challenge that they were having was, yes, now we've got this content, we've put it on these platforms, but how do we make money off it? How do we push it? How do we market it? So now we felt there was a gap now that needed to be filled, where these people needed to be accelerated. You know, they have market-ready products, but now they need access to those markets. So that's where we sat down with the partner, um, British Council, and we created this accelerated this phase two. So the idea being creating a program where we run some workshops to optimize their current products so that they're market ready, and then create platforms where they have access to curators, recruiters, distributors, uh, and different types of uh, corporate organizations that can they can give that can give them opportunities or accelerate their access to markets. I think the first thing that I then did mention to everyone was just like the artists need to understand what they're selling. Right? And at this point it's more about their identity. So once you're happy to and proud to say I am Zimbabwean, this is where I come from, this is how I grew up and this is where I'm trying to go. And you understand that to your core it will be very easy for you to kind of like now let everyone else or know and then they decide whether they like it or not. With what we experienced with the last workshop, I literally felt like I needed therapy. There's something in the way that they did it yesterday that really moved us in a way where we had to really think about what we're doing. Um, to be clear about the goals, to be clear about why we are doing this. So I really expect things to obviously change for the better and maybe get to a point where uh, things are a bit more clear for me as far as being an author is concerned and um, what kind of impact I really want to make uh, in society. I'd say since the workshops till the mixer, there have been some participants that have put in extra work into their social media. For example, Ryan Synth. His social media is just amazing. Like, he posts regularly and his posts are very interesting and engaging. But he's one of the many that are doing great on social media. And yeah, and I think some of them, at the beginning of the program, they didn't really know what, what their direction was going to be. And I feel like from the mix and hearing them talking to other people, they have a direction, they know who they are, they know what their brand is about. So I think that the refinement is working. I think what stands out about this program is just the vulnerability of these young people. They've come out to really show who they are. I think sometimes when we do mentorship programs, we, it's very dictative. We are dictating and saying this is what we want, but this has really been two-way for us. It's been a learning eye-opener for us to see what's out there, but with us also giving back. So we're getting and we're also giving. And I think that's what I've liked about this particular mentorship program. It's not a dictatorship. It's not me as patient saying, I know it all. I've learned a hell of a lot throughout this process as well. I've got the benefit of looking back at where the participants started and the caliber of work that they were producing with the resources they had versus what they are doing now and the shift. Um, and that includes the opportunities that they've started to get. So I think that at the very least it's been transformative. Um, I think perspe uh, perspectives have been changed. I think uh, standards have been lifted. And I think uh, they've all been given access. Um, and access comes in the form of access to uh, potential partners or clients, 
or, or audiences that they didn't have before. And we are proud to say that we did give uh, uh, these participants a shot and they took it and they did more than we had bargained for. So I think the, if I had to uh, describe it, I'd say it was a transformative process for a number of them that put their all into it. Yeah.